Welcome to Module 3, Becoming a Data Skeptic. After completing this module, you should be able to describe how the methods used for data collection may impact the results, assess the credibility of a data source or study, assess potential areas of bias found within a data source or study, and assess the truth of a study based on the manipulation of data and interpretation of results. When you hear the word skeptic, you might have a negative connotation. However, being a skeptic when it comes to data just means that you are asking questions. Think of it as being a detective. In this module, you will learn how to ask the right questions and develop skills as a good data citizen. This will help you think critically about how research or data results are reported and what conclusions the authors are making. After this module, you will be able to examine the original source of the statistics being summarized to determine if the findings are being interpreted correctly, as well as how the data was collected and analyzed. This skill of critically examining data is a benefit to your organization and community. As you review data or research, you will answer four questions to evaluate method, credibility, bias, and truth of data and publications. Method. How data is collected through an in-person or online survey or interview, as well as the procedure for collecting the data, can have an impact on the accuracy of the data in an article or report. If data is not gathered in a scientific, consistent, unbiased, and ethical way, negative consequences could include participants not being able to answer the questions on a survey accurately, it may be difficult to replicate the study and resources might be wasted on ineffective policies or interventions. Other researchers may waste time doing further studies, and there could be harm to the public or participants involved in the study. As you review the methods, you are looking to make sure the authors avoided poorly worded questions, provided training for data collectors, and acknowledged any missing data in their reporting. Credibility in public and behavioral health, the author is often a government organization. Many national data sources from the government, such as CDC, SAMHSA, or state government sources, have extensive reviews before being published. If you are not using government data sources, use online scholarly databases such as InfoTrack, PsycInfo, Google Scholar, PubMed, LexisNexis, and EBSCO, which provide access to the latest research in hundreds of areas. Local librarians are also a great resource if you would like one-on-one -on -one assistance finding credible research. When it comes to reviewing an article or report, it's time to put on our detective hats. Important questions to ask include, is the data quantitative or qualitative? Does this make sense given the type of data being collected? How was the data collected? In person, over the phone, online, or through the mail? Does the article or report provide information on how the data was collected and analyzed? Were consistent procedures followed if data was collected at multiple sites? If data was collected by others, were the protocols written down? Did the researchers provide data collection training? How was confidentiality and security of data information during the data collection ensured? Did participants drop out of the study? If so, why? What was the review process for the data, analysis, and findings? Does the author have a stake in the findings? Before you decide to use data found in an article for a report, publication, or assessment, make sure you examine the credibility of the article by asking some important questions. Who is the author? What else have they written? In what communities and contexts does the author have expertise? When looking at the study itself, what sources does the study cite? Are there any published reviews, responses, or rebuttals to the study? How recent is the article? What edition of the source are you using? Is it the most recent? Has anything changed in the field of study since the publication? What journal or publication is the article in? Is it reputable? Here are a few tips for determining the credibility of a journal. Is the journal found in the major bibliographic databases for the field? Ulrich's Global Serials directory features information on over 300,000 periodicals and is a good resource to check. Are articles featured in the journal peer-reviewed? A peer review process means that articles are scrutinized by other experts in the field before they are approved for publication. What is the journal's publishing history? 
How long has the journal been available? If it's a new journal, is its mission available? Who are the members of the editorial board? Bias Your next step is to determine potential bias. You will need to ask about the purpose of the report or article. Remember that bias can be both conscious or subconscious. As a data citizen and detective, these types of questions can help you assess bias. Why was this source created? Who is the intended audience of the source? Is it an educational resource, or is the intent to persuade readers? For example, if you are reading information about a particular program or intervention, is data being presented, or is it more of a sales pitch? Can you tell who funded the research? Does this present any bias? For example, is someone benefiting financially or in other ways from this report or article? Does the source strive to be objective? Being objective means that the author or source presents facts, not personal feelings or opinions. Some indications of objectivity are when the author includes lessons learned, acknowledges challenges and limitations, or highlights considerations for application of the findings. Look for transparency when you examine articles for bias. Bias is not always a bad thing, but it is something a researcher should state, such as a financial conflict of interest, so that it can be acknowledged by the reader. Examine articles to see if the authors clearly state any bias and what efforts they made to address the bias. For example, imagine your coalition is planning to conduct an evaluation of a local alcohol policy change. You decide as a coalition that with limited funding available for the project, you need to utilize your own staff to conduct the evaluation. In your report, you would need to acknowledge that your staff was involved and what procedures you put in place to limit the bias as much as possible. Truth Your last task is to question the truth of the data or study. Make sure to ask yourself questions such as, Does the author discuss the limitations of the study? How large was the sample? The size of the sample will impact the generalizability of the results. Does the author make assumptions that could affect the results? Does the author discuss both statistically significant and non-significant results? Statistical significance helps quantify how likely the result was due to chance versus another factor. In credible studies, the author should discuss the concepts of significance and confidence intervals. Are the results generalizable to a larger population? Why or why not? For example, if the study method was a focus group in a particular rural community, you might not be able to assume that the same results would be found in an urban or resort community. Factors to consider for generalizability might include the sample size or the demographic makeup of the study population compared to the general population as it relates to age, race, socioeconomic status, geography, or other factors. How do the results compare to other studies on the same topics? Were the findings similar? Are the study's methods clear? Could they be reproduced? Was the study peer-reviewed? Is correlation being confused with causation? Remember our example of height and weight. Being taller is correlated with weighing more, but increasing your weight doesn't cause you to grow taller. Or, if researchers conducted a quantitative study and found a high correlation between teen cigarette smoking rates and vaping, the author should not state that smoking causes vaping, only that there is a significant relationship between the two activities. Key points to remember. For credible data sources, utilize local, state, and national government data sources, as well as database sources reviewed by experts. Ask questions about the data. Remember that the job of the data citizen is to ask the right questions. When reviewing articles and data, practice questioning the method, credibility, bias, and truth. Thoroughly evaluate your potential data sources and articles. Reach out to others, such as epidemiologists, data analysts, and librarians, who can help you find credible sources of information. If you are unsure of the credibility or reliability of data, there are experts who can help you.